click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends today we will discuss about the data definition language part of unstructured query language or sql we will know that what are the important features of ddl in an sql and what are the ddl commands that we have introduced in an sql to give part of <music> As we are talking about the DDL or the data definition, we must know that the DDL is used to specify the designing of schema of a database and that is we are designing the schema so it should be hidden from the user and part of a database administrator. So the SQL data definition has performing the following functions. First it is used to specify the design of the schema. Next, it is used to design the types of the values or the data types on a variety of numbers. Third, it is putting the integrity constraints. Fourth, it is giving the set of indices to indicate the values or a tuples inside a relation. Fifth, it is given the authorization matrices or the tables to give the SQL queries. And lastly, it maintains the physical storage on a particular computer system. So the SQL DDL performs all of these operations. Now that to define and going more on this DDL, we first know that what are the data types that SQL offers. The first data type that SQL offers is a CAD data type. The CAD data type is a character data type which we have specified with the size. Here it is mentioned as in. So the cat data type specified as a character data type. Now another type of character data type is present in the SQL that is known as a varchar data type. It is a variable character of size in. But the main difference between the char and varchar is suppose that we are storing in a char of five and also a varchar of five. Now the value that is stored is a V and here is also a V. So the data storage will be different for this care and varchar. For care it will be 5. Instead of having only 3 characters it will store 5 characters as we have mentioned it is a 5. But in the varchar of a 5, the RV will store only 3 characters because it is a variable character type and it would store only the characters that is mentioned in the actual value, not the characters. There is a maximum allowable limit on the character. The next is the integer or int. Int is a normal integer number that is specified in a minus 2 to the power 31 to the plus 2 to the power 32 range. Next is a small int which is a variation of the integer that provides us with the smallest and the small range of the integer number. Next is the numeric. The numeric data type is absolutely important where we are precising the domestic or the part after the decimal point. Here we are mentioning that the number can have p digits and after that d is the precision of the decimal point. Say suppose p is 8 comma 2. So we can have an 8 digit on the last right two digits will be a decimal point. So it can be like this. Now we are moving to the floating point number or a float. A floating point number will consider a normal number without any precision and there is a double precision number that is also a floating point or real numbers. Now that are all the data types that a uh, key will provide we can store the values in this. Other than that there are some complex or derived data type but these are the basic data types that an key will provide. Now we will move to the DDL part. So to score an a create table department that is a department relation creation we should write that
So the main area of creating a relation is the format of create table, then specifying the table name or the relation name. And then after that, all the attributes along with their data types separated by a special character comma. And when we finish typing this one, we have to put a semicolon to indicate that our creating a schema or designing a schema has been finished. Now we will see that how this creation of schema or the table can be modified in many way after putting the constraints. Constraints are the specification or some condition that we put on an attribute to actually design the schema more accurately and precisely. So we can put the integrity constraint like the foreign key constraint on the referential integrity, the primary key constraints, the not null constraints and all. So we will see one by one. First is the primary key constraints. When we are putting the primary key constraints while designing the schema using the create table, then we need to mention all the combination of key or a single key that is be considered as a primary key of that relation after putting all the attributes in the relation. So we'll see that, how to do that. Here we can see that we are creating the relation department with all the attribute names and after finishing all the attributes declaring them we are giving a command like primary key and in the braces we are specifying the key attributes or the combination of key attributes as a primary key. So we are constraining the schema design to have the primary key of the department name as a not null and a an unique key to provide the record and the tuple and the uniqueness. Now we will see that what is a not null constraint. Other than the primary key, there must be or there could be any key or attribute that could have a not null constraint. So while we are putting the not null constraint, we are defining a schema that a particular attribute cannot be left null while we are inserting the values in that schema or a relation. So we'll see that how to do that. See here we are specifying a not null constraint beside the building. So the building attribute cannot be left null while we are inserting the value in the department relation. Now we'll move to the next type of integrity constraint that is a referential integrity and that includes the foreign key references. So after that we have declared the department name of the department relation as a primary key constraint. Now we can refer this department name as a foreign key to another relation by the referential integrity constraint. So we'll see that how to do that. We are now creating a relation course that will have the department name as a foreign key to the department relation. See here in the course relation, first we are creating the course ID, the title, department name and the numeric of the credit. So now when we are primary key constraint putting on the CID, that becomes the CID primary key on the course and the department name on the foreign key, that is the primary key of the department table. Now we are referencing the table name department here. So two things we need to keep in mind. We are referencing a foreign key so that key attribute must be specified in the definition schema of that particular relation. 
And the second one is the size and the data type must match with exactly the size and the data type with the primary key of the relation which is using the referential integrity. And these two things can be maintained while putting the referential integrity in a create table command. Now another table can reference this course table which can implement this course ID as a reference from department and another table department name from the department ID. So we'll see that how to do that. See here we are creating a relation teachers which have ID, CID, SID, SEM and year, department name, year. So here we can see that we are putting the primary key of the ID, CID, SID, SEM and year. So we can create a combination of the keys as a primary key. And the interesting part is we are creating a foreign key CID which is being a primary key of this teacher's ID. So a primary key that is being referenced to another relation can be added as a primary key to that relation. Now this course ID or the CID is added with the primary key references to the course relation and another the department name which is being referenced from the department relation. So in this way we can add more than one referential integrity while designing the schema. Now other than designing the schema, DDL consists of the table deletion command. In SQL, the table deletion command and the tuple deletion command is extremely different and it is even different from the DDL to DML. Now when we are deleting a tuple from a relation, it looks like this. So this is a basic DDL to delete a table R, we are using the command drop table R. Now if we want to delete something from a relation that is a particular tuple, then we should write delete star from R. So that is a tuple deletion, not a table deletion. But one thing we need to keep in mind that when we are putting this command in execution, it is actually deleting the logical schema but not the lowest level physical schema. So it is deleting the table that the design or the schema of that particular table. Now we can delete an update on the modify on a table schema like this way. So we can delete it like So here we are giving an alter command which is alteration or modification of a schema that we are defining the schema again by putting it a R table or R relation and adding a data type of varchar tan with the attribute A. Now we can again drop this A as an alteration or updation of the database schema. So we can do that by So in this way we can add attribute to a table and drop attribute from the table. So these are all the DDLs that is associated with an SQL. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.